welcome back. I'm Gloria Starr, International Etiquette, Communication, and Manners Coach. This is part three of four parts for Dining with Delight. Now, our salad plate has been removed by the staff from our right. And we now see that we have in front of us a beautiful uh, plate that is going to be your entree or your dinner plate. And you remember in section one, a part one, we talked about the D and the B, and that means your drinks are on your right and your bread is on your left. The bread is actually a separate plate with a beautiful bread knife, just simply lovely. The bread goes around the table, and even if you don't want bread, you must accept the bread because someone else on your other side may wish it. So don't say no thank you, just say thank you, and then either have the bread or pass it on. If you're having bread, you only pick up and touch the bite that you're going to eat, and then it goes on to your plate, and then you pass the bread on further to the next person. And this particular gesture here, this is my right hand holding the bread, my left hand touching my wrist, and I'm looking at the person giving a nod and a slight smile, and I'm passing this to them. This is a Korean gesture showing the highest level of respect as I pass the bread to the next person. So I would have the bread, and I'm going to break a piece of bread, only one bite size, have the butter, put it on here, and I'm bringing it directly to my mouth. I'm not having it halfway while I have a little chat and the bread is moving like this. I know it's very Italian and I have been to Italy several times and when I go to Italy you pick up some of their wonderful traits as well. But in North America in particular, the bread is coming directly up to your mouth. If you're having soup, don't ever take that bread and uh, get the last bit of soup and then pop that into your mouth because that would not be appropriate. Now we have our dinner and we have numerous things that would be on the plate. So don't eat one item and then start the next item, but mix them so that you have something on your fork and you eat it. Again, this is the large fork and it's in my hand with the forefinger at the top. The bottom of the fork is in the palm of my hand. And once you pick up your cutlery, you're using both at the same time and you're cutting only one bite, rather than cut, 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 which I see so many people do. So it's one cut, move over, not down, just over, bring your food to your mouth. When you're taking a break, the cutlery is open, indicating to the staff and your guests that you are not finished yet. Again, the napkin, dab, dab, and reach for a glass. Now this time we're going to have a sip of the wine. And usually wine is put in clear glasses, but for the beautiful display of our blue today, we've given a more festive or casual look, even though we're still formal. And I've put some white wine in this beautiful blue glass. So I'm going to raise it, holding it by the stem and sip. And prior to sipping your wine, you will actually use your napkin so you don't have any food particles on this. Now, for our entree, I've had one or two bites and I realized that I would like some seasoning on my entree. Now, because we have a table set for two, I could reach, but normally you would not do the boardroom reach. In this case, I'm going to reach for the salt and pepper for the purpose of our demonstration where someone at the table would normally pass it to me. In America, the salt is in the container with the most holes in the top and the pepper with lesser number of holes in the top. But in the Middle East and parts of Asia, it is the other way around. So the salt would actually have the least number of holes in the top for the shaker, and the pepper would have the most. So here in North America, I've decided that I would like more seasoning on my beverage. And you don't season prior to eating it or trying it because you've insulted the host, where now I've tasted it, and now I'm going to season it. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt on my hand to see how much actually comes out and then I'm going to sprinkle it and then I would sprinkle that. And I would then set them down but looking at the next person 
and they might say, yes, I'd like some salt, please. You still pass the salt and the pepper because they are a couple and they go around the table together. So now I would pick up my cutlery again and I would enjoy my meal. Always sitting with your back away from the back of the table. Now, conversation at the dinner table is always another fun, challenging event. And conversation at a family event could be about family things, and it could certainly be about what happened at work, what happened at school. But in a business situation, you want to be much more aware that it is about business. However, you do not start talking about business in North America until after You've received the menus, you've placed your order, the menus have been removed, and you've had a little bit of time for small talk. And that's a social kind of greeting kind of thing. And always keep in mind, in a public place, business is private, and you want to be very aware that others do not overhear what it is that you are saying. So I'm enjoying my meal, I've had a sip of my wine or beverage, and life is simply grand. Now I recommend that you never leave the table during the meal. Although it, if, if it is an absolute necessity, then you would just put your napkin up to the side of your plate and say, excuse me, and that's it. And no cell phones or PDAs at the table ever. It is very rude. Always remember that the person in front of you is your highest criteria, not your phone. Now, when I've finished my entree and I see that others are finishing as well, I would then put my cutlery together like this, indicating that I am finished. You do not put your knife and fork together, and you do not have your fork upside down as the risk of it falling over is very high. So that would indicate to the wait staff that I am finished. Again, no moving back and forth when the wait staff comes around to remove your plate, but just moving slightly back to allow them the ease of removing the plates. <coughs> Upon completion <coughs> of the entree, the charger also goes. Now the charger is the gold plate directly underneath the entree plate. And it would be removed on completion of the main course. In fact, everything, almost everything, is removed now. So that means the bread and butter plate would be removed, the salt and pepper, uh, the these items here would be removed in preparation for it and the anticipation of dessert. Gloria Starr, the International Etiquette and Manners Coach.